What I want to do in this video is explore the economic developments under Henry VII. Now there's not really much to this when regards to the chapters in the textbooks, um, but we do need to look at a couple of things, generally the economic development side of things. We want to look at trade, exploration, and then prosperity and depression. Now these are very uh, basic topics and there's not very much specific knowledge that you're going to need for this topic because a lot of economic development is covered in the foreign policy and the government section. Okay, so first of all, let's just talk about how England was largely agricultural. This meant that farming was a very important part of English life during this time. So this was mainly to do with farming. And we see this basically between uh, 1485 at the start of the Tudor period, and this takes us all the way up to the 1603, towards the end of the Tudor period. There's a lot of agriculture going on in England. There were also coal and iron industries, but these were small compared to the cloth industry, because the cloth trade made up of 90% 90, 90 of all exports, which is, a incredible, which is an incredible figure. So... What we see here is the dominance of the cloth industry and the cloth trade compared to iron and coal. Iron and coal would improve during the Industrial Revolution. I'm just going to call the IR the Industrial Revolution. And this happened later on in English history. Cloth was exported to the Netherlands which is where we see some uh, links to foreign policy. So we look at the foreign policy I'm just going to do that over this image. You can't really see it, but oh well. So we see links to foreign policy here because when there was tensions between Burgundy and the Netherlands, Henry introduced a trade embargo on the Netherlands, which then led to the intercursus magnus. Okay, so that's where the cloth trade was ex Exporting to, so by reference, so we see that cloth was exported to the Netherlands, which meant that around 90% of exports went through the Netherlands, went to the Netherlands. Netherlands. We also see a little bit of exploration and prosperity in terms of the navigation acts which were introduced those two the first navigation act and the second navigation act which were released um, in 1485 and 1486 now what's important about those dates is that 1485 was the year henry took the throne took the throne which is very important considering that it suggests that the navigation acts and that the economy in general was a high priority for Henry because he dealt with it within his first year and then also within the second year in 1486. Okay, And the navigation acts was an attempt to promote trade and break what is known as a monopoly by the Hanseatic League. Now the Hanseatic League were a European trading company and they had formed what is known as a monopoly, which is where their income, and I'm not going to give it a, a def, definite economic da, a definition, but the a monopoly is where you have the vast majority of trade and income from whatever, you know, whatever profession, in this case it's trade, going to one place. That is the Hanseatic League. They had all of the power in the trading industry in this time and this meant the navigations acts was introduced to support english traders specifically the merchant adventurers which were an english trading company let me just bring this around here which was an english english trading company And they were promoted by the Navigation Acts, which is important. More on the economy, we can talk about exploration, the exploration of new lands. Now, this was a huge part of Tudor life. So this was a part of the Tudor uh, legacy. So the Tudor legacy 
really was built around exploration considering that we have not just the exploration in, during the reign of Henry VIII but we've also got the founding of colonies in America under Elizabeth I. However, under Henry VII, there wasn't much exploration. Nothing was achieved, despite the fact that Henry did want to increase exploration. He did patronise the adventurers John and Sebastian Cabot, which was a step forward in the terms of exploration. However, despite this, during Henry's reign, there was very little achieved. This is specifically Henry the Seventh, not Henry the Eighth, because the exploration increased and picked up during Henry the Eighth. But John and Sebastian Cabot, they did sail to North America and explore and claim new lands for the King of England, which was a very important. So they, these two here were successful explorers. They can't take that away from them. Successful explorers. Okay, and then they also, with regard to America, they also went up north and round Greenland and explored regions around there as well. So what we've got here is a very small topic chapter in terms of the specification. However, you do need to know about exploration. You do need to specifically know about the 1485 and 1486 Navigation Acts which did lead to Brit trying an attempt at breaking the monopoly of the Hanseatic League. And we've also got just the general information about export and trade and where the economy got the majority of its strength from.